Welcome back to our series, The Parables of Jesus. Our parable today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44 through 46. The parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl of great price. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Buy low, sell high. The cornerstone strategy of stock markets, junk dealers, used car salesmen, and yard sale aficionados. In capitalism and human nature, it is that which drives people. Now, most of us are usually on the other end of the scale. Our motto? Buy high and sell low. But that's a discussion for another day. In the previous parable of Matthew 13, Jesus leaves the crowd and explains the parable of the tares or weeds privately in a house. Mark tells us concerning the parables in Mark 4, 33 and 34, with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples he explained everything. These two parables present an astonishing look at the value of the kingdom as perceived by two individuals from differing perspectives. In our first parable, we find the man is presented with a treasure hidden in a field. We aren't told what the treasure is. Was it gold? Was it costly gems? We don't know. The point is, whatever he found, the man realizes its worth. He does the same to that treasure as apparently someone else had done before him. He hides it. Then, with joy, not begrudgingly or with regret, he willingly sells all he has and goes back to buy the field. You and I have no doubt read stories of such things. The man who goes traipsing around the backwoods and discovers a priceless old car covered up in a barn, or the garage sailor who scours the early morning sales and discovers the priceless painting underneath a cheap print. The popular TV show Antiques Roadshow is filled with such stories of discovery. Now, as to our second parable, we have another story of discovery. This is not a story of hidden treasure or accidental finds. This parable presents us with the searcher. For the man who finds the pearl of great price is one whose business it was to find this rare and beautiful mineral. In his search, he knows exactly what he is looking for. When he sees it, he immediately recognizes its beauty and worth. Let's break this down and see the process. First, the merchant is searching for fine pearls. Then, he finds the one pearl of great value, and then he goes out and sells all that he has and buys it. Now, let's take a look and note what he doesn't do. The, the merchant doesn't haphazardly go about, but with intention to buy it, he travels. He doesn't just admire the pearl and leave it. He doesn't bargain or pretend it is of lesser value. He doesn't delay or wait for the price to go down. He doesn't count his own possessions to be of any sentimental value, but freely gives up all that he has to buy the fine pearl. We have two perspectives in these parables. One is not searching and finds something of great value. The other is searching and finds something of great value. But in each case, they sell all they have in order to acquire something of greater value. It is beyond dispute that what each has found is of great value. This is not a case of sentiment of value or beauty in the eye of the beholder. So what do you think these parables represent? Is there a dark, hidden meaning here? Is there yet a meaning that only the wisest of the wise could find? Not at all. No? One must be diligent to seek the meaning and understand what true treasure you would be willing to sacrifice everything in order to obtain. The treasure represented that they have found, indeed, is the salvation offered by God. Paul tells of this very thing when he quotes Isaiah in Romans 10, 20, and 21. 
Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. One wonders about the previous owner of that property and what the significance, if any, there is. Was this Israel who didn't recognize the Savior who came with such a priceless message? And who was the previous owner of that priceless pearl? Well, these may simply be a part of the narrative and no more. The great takeaway of these parables is the fact that the two gave all they had to possess those treasures. That's what Jesus taught, and let's see what they gained. In Mark 10, 28-30, Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. What do you have that is worth more than that in this life? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and study another parable of Jesus.